Our God is faithful. Amen. You know, on was it on Friday, one of these days when I was um, leading prayers, I began to talk about forgiveness. And I want to continue in that light. Forgiveness and offenses. You know, one thing I've discovered in life is that the Bible says offenses will come, whether you like it or not. You know, people are going to be offended. There will be offenses, generally speaking. And especially, I mean, as a family. And it's something that, you know, I'll need us to get to understand that offenses will come. And that's one strong strategy of the devil against the church, against families. And, but the truth is that a lot of us don't know what to do. We just don't even understand that. Um, we give the devil a foothold every time. The devil gains advantage over us. And with that, the devil easily can inflict us with sicknesses and with different things. Offenses will come. You cannot help but have offenses. You know, you, it, it will come. And it's, you know, very ironical because... These are the things that we grow up with from when you were in primary school. You know, every day you meet people that will offend you, that offended you. And it's like that. You know, in your family, even with the close people you are, there will be offenses. Your, your brother will offend you. Your husband will offend you. Your wife will offend you. Your children will offend you. I mean, it doesn't matter how much you love them. Offenses will come. Now, the problem that a lot of us have is the you know, the ability to handle offenses. Huh? A lot of us don't know how to handle offenses at all. We just don't know how to handle offenses. And that's why, the, that, you know, this problem, they linger, you know, and we'll find excuses for things. I always say, do you know, I mean, they say finding excuse, you know, it means you're looking for. If, if you find, you look for an excuse not to be in church today, you will not be in church. I mean, if you know that. If you look for an excuse to hit somebody, you will find because you're looking for it. Huh? I mean, that's why they talk about finding excuse. If you look for an excuse for anything, whatever you look for, you will find. You know, Bible says, seek and you shall find. <laughs> you know, so whatever it is that you're looking for, you will find. And some of us have gotten to a place. If you look for fault, you will find fault. Huh? You find fault. That's why most of the time when people come to me in dating, I tell them, when you're dating, it's not time to find faults. Uh, you know, you're past the place of finding faults. You've gotten to a place where you want to consolidate on strengths, not weaknesses. Everyone has weaknesses. Everyone. The first thing I want you to understand is this. You are not perfect yourself. About offenses, you are not perfect yourself. So the first thing that you need to do and look, I mean, look at yourself. I'm not perfect. You can be perfect in some areas, but cannot be in every area. Where you have strength, you're perfect. Somebody else is weak. Where you are weak, someone else is strong. And so if you have that at the back of your mind, you will not be expecting, you know, perfection from anybody. You know, because you know you are not. You know, if you can make mistake for whatever reason, then you have no right to expect somebody not to make mistake. If you can offend somebody, then you have no right to expect that somebody will not offend you. I don't know if you're following, I mean, my line of thoughts. You know, because if this is the way you think, then you will easily release people and forgive. We've gotten to a place where, you know, we, we, we are not like that anymore. You look for, you know, uh, for just the little things. Some of us have become fragile emotionally. And emotional, you know, you know uh, emotionally fragile people are very sensitive. When you, you get to a place where you're emotionally fragile, everything affects you. Everything affects you. You know, because the first thing you need to do is to get your emotional emotion together first. Everything in the house, most of the time, you see, I mean, like, you know, I mean, it's the man that would say some things, you know, and the woman would say, you have become insensitive. And the woman would say, 
you have become uh, the man will say you have become insensitive and the the no no the, the man will say you have become too sensitive and the woman will say you have become insensitive you know is the woman that kind of i mean it's not general i'm not generalizing you have become insensitive the other one will say you have become too sensitive and you say you will not always win an argument you would always have these challenges going on and on and offenses on a daily basis, on a weekly basis they will arise if you know how to handle offense. If you have learned, that's, these are the things that they are supposed to have taught us in school, how to handle offenses. I don't know why they didn't teach it. There are some people, I mean there are some people in school, you know, they are very offensive. They just, they offend you, you know, whether it's with their laughter. You know, there are some people that just offend you without talking. <laughs> There's some wife that offend their husband that way. There's some husband that offend their wives that way. <laughs> that one sends a lot of message. And you see somebody fighting. You started again. Ah, what did I say? But truly, have they said anything? <laughs> but you know beyond that that there is there's something behind it. You know, and we have you'll be surprised at the things that get people offended. And why? And that's why I want to talk about forgiveness. Why? Because a lot of us have gotten to a place where our, our marriages, our families, our lives are crumbling. And now, most of the time, it's not just about you. You see it. You, you see it in Scripture. That is not just about you. You know, let's just even read it. Hebrews 12, verse 15. You will see that this is not just about you. We're going to look at bitterness. We're going to look at these things. You know, it says, looking diligently, focus diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. And a lot of us are failing of the grace of God. You know, and you're causing others to fail of God's grace. Why? He says, lest any root of bitterness springing up. You see, it's a root that is springing up and thereby many be defiled. It's not, if it's only one person that is affected, it would have been okay. By that action of offense, that action of unforgiveness, that action of bitterness, a lot of people are defiled. The fate of many are, are, are brought down. But when you're doing it, you just think it's because of me. You know, we have become so self-centered and selfish that we don't look at what we are doing, how it affects others. And majorly our children, you think they don't know anything. You're sowing some seeds that you might not be able to repair. You're sowing some seed. And we, as we look at this, because you see, some people, you know, emotionally, they have been damaged. Emotionally, they have been attacked. And things have, are, are happening. And that's why, and frankly speaking, I just want us to look at this. And my scripture today is going to be from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read from verse 25. You know, uh, we're going to 32, though, but I want to read from verse 25. It says, uh, let's, let's, let's take it from 23. Let's take it from 23, I think. Okay. Yes. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that's where we're going to do, you know. Uh, we, we need renewal. That's why this is, I'm, I'm teaching this way. I mean, renewed. In the character of your mind, because if this does not happen, everything we're talking about today is just a waste. It says, be renewed in the character of your mind, the attitude of your mind. Some of us have an attitude. And you see, and it's the devil. It's an attitude that the devil, because of the things that are happening and the things that we're doing and the way we are, you see, there's an attitude. Bible says you have to like renew it, change, you know, the attitude, the character of your mind. That's what the Bible's saying. Let's go on. It says, it says, and that you put on a new man. Today, this is what I'm looking for. There has to be a change. You have to put on a new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. There has to be a change. You have to put on the new man. You know, you have to be, you are, today, you have to make up your mind that you're going to put up a new person. You have to be a new person. And 20, 20, 26, it says, And be ye angry and sin not. I'm taking this gradually so that we can get to where we're going to. You see, to be angry is not a wrong thing. You know, everybody gets angry. Hello? The problem is that a lot of us sin in our anger. The Bible says, be angry, but sin not. 
You know, some of us sin when we are angry. We sin by the things we say. We sin, you know. I mean, some people, they're angry and they say things that they shouldn't say. You know, it says, be angry and sin not. And not all, only that says, let not the sun go down on your rod. That's where the problem is. When you sleep over a thing, you meditate on it. You're, you're building something that you might not be able to handle. You're building something that you might not be able to handle. It says, let not the sun go down. In other words, if you're angry, you're upset, it's allowed till nightfall. Anything after, when the sun goes down, you have no right to be angry anymore. Even if it happens a minute before the sun went down, <laughs> you have no right to be angry anymore. You know? And so, and it's saying so that you don't even get angry at night. So, <laughs> because the sun has already gone down. You know, I mean, that's on the lighter mood anyway. I mean, it says, be angry and sin not. I just want to read the scripture to you, and, and you'll probably follow me. It says, let not the sun go down on your rod. It's just like a seed. When you plant a seed, it's still the seed. The next day, by the time you go and check, you see some things starts growing from the seed. If you allow it another day, it's going, before you know what's happening, it is shooting out. If you, some, some seed have stayed so long, they have become a tree. They have become a tree. And the more night you allow, you know, sun, you allow come down on your anger. A tree is building. You know, it's the root of bitterness. Now it has become the tree of bitterness. And you need to work on it. Or else it will destroy you. It's not about who you are holding in anger. You know, it would destroy you if you hold people, you know, angrily hold people in bitterness. What happens is you keep somebody in prison, but the truth is you have the key and you stay in the prison with the person. You are not moving forward. You are stagnant. You are in the same position again and again. You are not moving forward. And it's important if you want to move forward to progress in life to understand this beat. Let's read the scripture continuously. I mean, I'm just quickly taking time before, I mean, we, 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 we look at, it says, neither give place to the devil. I mean, just think about how you, in, in some of our houses, the devil is sitting, is king. He has a special chair. Where he's sitting, we have given him place. You know, the problem with the devil is that he gives us, to get the place, he gives us reasons. Excuse the reason. There is nobody in this place that has ever gotten angry that didn't have a reason to get angry. Huh? Is there anybody? Nobody gets angry for no reason. Huh? For a reason. That's why if you read down, the Bible says, you know, verse 32, it says, Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven. In other words, God has given you a reason to forgive. There's a reason for Christ's sake. Beyond any other reason you can have, God has given you a reason to forgive. It's forgiven. Yeah, for, forgiving one to touch, one to hold on to. Can you go back to where we were? You know, let's go back to verse. Neither give place to the devil. A lot of us give place to the devil. We have given advantage to the devil. Second Corinthians 2 11, I like the way he put it. And that's what it is. We have given place to the devil. You know, I'm still not just, I've not touched what I want to talk about yet. It says, let's, let's read from a stain. Uh, if you read from a stain, you would, you would. He says, to whom ye forgive anything. You know, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it for your sake, forgive it I in the person of Christ. He says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. Let Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant. You know, it's an advantage. Anytime you're holding somebody in grudge, in bitterness, in malice, you know, what happens and what scripture is telling you is that gotten an advantage over you, unknown to you, whether you know it. If you play lawn tennis, you understand. You know, when you play after, I said, say, advantage Federer, you know, he has gotten an advantage. Before he gets a win, huh? you need to rectify things. It's only an advantage he's gotten. And from that, that advantage, it would destroy things. And the devil has sincerely gotten advantage over everyone, a majority of us in this area. Why? Because you have a reason. Always you have a reason. 
You have a reason. And we're going to look at some things. I'm going to look at scriptures, you know, to just... Let's read Ephesians back. Is it 25 or so? Let's continue quickly. Let me go through it so that I can bring out the points that I want to bring out and talk about what I want to talk about. It says, no, 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 28 now. It says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need it. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. This is part of it, you know, but because of our time. But that which is good. Some of us, what comes out of our mouth is corrupt. When some people speak to you, they will, they will kill your morale. Some husband will speak to their wife and all confidence and boldness and that was left will dissipate. It will just disappear. When they open their mouth, perhaps it's let no corrupt communication proceed. It says that which is good to the use, only the things that will edify, let it be what comes out of your mouth. You see, you can even say the, the, the truth. If it's not in love, you will destroy the other person. It matters how you communicate, even good. It says, to the edifying, to the use of edifying, everything, let it be used for edifying, that in my minister grace, opportunity to the era. In 30, it says, and grieve not the spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of salvation, redemption. Now, this is it. I want to also look at this. And can I get this in the amplified version? And this is how bitterness, this is what it starts. This is what it does. And this is how it degenerates when you are a bitter person. When you have allowed anger to take root over your life. When you have allowed anger to take root in your life, this is what happens. It says, now, it leads to bitterness. I know the King James put it differently. It says, it leads force to bitterness. And bitterness is a poison. I'm going to show it to you. You know, it is a poison. Two things that have damaged a lot of us psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually is bitterness and guilt. And we're going to touch and look at those things. You know, but let's, let, let's, let's look at this. It says, let all bitterness, when you are angry, it leads, if you don't address it or attack it, it then leads to bitterness, which is a poison. And after that, indignation, the King James put it as raw, but indignation, um, put it as anger, but it's indignation or outward expression of your roots, of your anger. You see, it's degenerating. If you don't capture it early, it says, you know, passion, rage, and bad temper. You see someone that is angry, you, you see that bad temper. And it shows on their faces. And at times, they don't even know that it's showing. It shows on you. It's in everything you do. You come to the house, it is showing everywhere. If the atmosphere in the house was of rejoicing, as you get in, without you saying anything, the thing would just dampen. You have come. You have just, you have just poisoned the atmosphere. There cannot be joy when you're there. You know, let's, let's read on. It says, Let all bitterness and indignation, wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, and resentment. Now, that's what it leads to. Animosity. You know, it's degenerating. And afterwards, what happened? Then quarreling. Always contention. You cannot agree on anything. Brawling and clamor. Quarreling. And from there, slander, evil speaking. You want to tear the person down. Abusive of blasphemous language. You see? He says, let it be banished from you. And he says, the last of it is with all malice. You become malicious. Have you not seen people, they call it uh, sin of passion. They become malicious. They have killed their partner. They have killed all because it becomes, you know, I mean, spite. And some of us do it to spite. You want to spite your partner. You want to, like, think about it. And we look at it, and everyone always thinks that I'm right, I'm wrong. Ill will or baseness of any kind. He says, let it be put away from you. And the last place, which is our... our, our um, um, our verse for today is this, be ye kind. And the, the, the challenge is that a lot of us are not kind. 
And that's the reason why you see these things degenerating to that extent. It says, be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiven one another. You have to be, your heart should be tender, so not hard. Some of us, our hearts are hard. We are not kind, and our hearts are hard. There is nothing. You don't accept forgiveness. You don't accept apologies. You don't forgive. You know, it's just, that's just you. It says, your, your heart is not tender. It's hard heart. It says, forgiven one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. You must get, get to that place. You know, I mean, we look, when we look at the reason why you have to do these things, it's, it, it, it's something that you need to know. You don't prepare for an offense when it happened, you prepare before it happens. Some of us, you need to like be magnanimous enough to begin to prepare and say, this thing, it is going to happen, so prepare for it. I don't know why we don't prepare for it. It is going to happen, so prepare for it. How do I handle it when it happens? For heaven's sake, for heaven's sake, for heaven's sake, we need to prepare for offenses. If you want to go to heaven, you know, I read, I mean, I listened to a video of a woman that died and was going to go to hell, all because she didn't forgive. I know a lot of us probably would have seen it or, or listened to it. You know, I'm not talking about, I mean, the scriptural, whatever of it, but that's just the truth. If you do not forgive, if you owe somebody in your heart, you will, not, you will not make it to heaven. You will not make it to heaven. But some of us, we disguise anger. We disguise bitterness. I mean, we call it different other names. They have given us, we have a rich vocabulary to call it whatever name it is today. But that's not what God is expecting of you. Hallelujah. That's not what God is expecting of you. I say there are two problems that do great or cause psychological and emotional spiritual damage to anyone. And these two things are bitterness and guilt. You know, bitterness poisons us. Guilt imprisons us. And forgiveness is the answer to both of them. Bitterness will poison you. Guilt will imprison you. And the way out is to learn to forgive. Forgiveness is the answer to both. What is guilt? Guilt is a, as a result of something we have done wrong. Why bitterness is our reaction to someone else's wrong or our perception that someone, someone you know, has offended us. Is that not it? Hmm? I said guilt is a result of something we have done wrong. When you sin against God, you know, you've done something wrong. You feel guilty. Hmm? And that it can imprison you. Meanwhile, bitterness is our reaction to what someone's the wrong or the offense that has been done to us. There are two things. One will poison you. And it's so, so, so dangerous that a lot of us allow poison in our system. If you don't know how to handle it, you will always continually be poisoned. And the other one imprisons us. And those are the things I want to look at because it's only forgiveness that can release you because when you forgive, you set two criminals free. Two people. The person that has offended you and you yourself that is within the person. Two people. And you need to set yourself free by forgiving. Some of us hold on to past thoughts, past things. We past and we, we want to look at that past and you, you talk about it. You know, we say, we talk about, you know, the last time we had forgiveness. You know, I had to sit down to look at some things. You say, can we forgive and forget. You know, yes, we can forgive and forget, and I will explain to you what it means to forget, because the problem is that meaning of forgetting. Forgetting is not that you will not remember that thing again, you know, that the person has done to you. Because if you read about God, and that's why, you know, look at what the Bible says about God. Let me just read that to you so that you understand what it means to forgive. In Isaiah 43, verse 25, it says, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgression for my own sake, for my, because of me, I don't want to be poisoned. For my own sake. And what does he do? God, he blots it out. He takes it out because of himself. Why? He's, uh, for, for his own sake, that's the reason. He says, and will not remember thy sins. 
Do you know what it is for him to say he will not remember your sins? No, God does not have amnesia. You know, he's omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience. He knows all things. But what God is saying to you is that I will not recall it. I will not bring it up again. And that's what a lot of us do. When you are you have said to this case three years ago, another issue comes up today. You go and bring it back. You have not truly forgiven or forgotten. Forgetting is, you know, the minute you settle it and it's over, you know, that thing, don't make photocopies of it. Destroy the hard copies and don't make phot photocopies. The reason why we have issues is a lot of people still point at fingers. You see, this is what they do three years ago. Now, see, I don't understand how people can recall things that happened two, three years ago. I forget them. Trust me. When issues that if you, I, I can't, you know, because I deliberately, it's a choice and a decision you have to make. You have misunderstanding, trust me. Do I have misunderstanding? Oh yeah, my wife is here. We do. You know? But we try as much as possible to resolve it. I mean, I can't, I can't undo not talking to somebody. I mean, I'm not just that kind of a person. I mean, you know, except on the, because what if rapture happens that night? I have to have preach all this message now. So my wife is laughing. <laughs> because it's the truth. Rapture now happens and the night I say, ah, you're still here. I say, I'm waiting for my own trumpet. <laughs> God forbid it will not happen. No. So you have to like plan and prepare for it. Don't think, I'm not being spiritual. I'm not perfect in all things. But you see, you have to live by God's word. Some of us, we don't make effort to make things happen. You recall things. You bring up things. God, you know, like he does not, he says, I will remember them no more. If something has happened after that, there's no need. Hmm, Pastor, in 2012, December 12, 3 a.m., Ask him what he did. <laughs> no, no, no. He's here. I'm not lying. Ask him what. 2012? You see, remember? You know? And you expect that there won't be issues? Let it go. You know, I mean, I've said this before. Read, looking at the life of Jesus. He told Peter. He said, before the cock crow, you deny me three times. Ah, Peter was bragging. You don't know me, me superstar Peter. Pope, Pope Peter, deny you. Wait till the and it was, yeah, just is, the devil has wanted to sift you. But I prayed for you. You know? So after he had denied Jesus, the next time Jesus was seeing him, he was, he was in short, he has not only denied, he took some of his disciples away again to be fishing. That's when Jesus met him. When Jesus saw him, ah, if it was me, <laughs> Peter would, he would, he would know. <laughs> he said, Pastor Peter, didn't I tell you you would deny me? Yeah, did you not deny me? You did not only deny me, you took all these people to deny me as well. Jesus never said anything about that. He says, Peter, lovest thou me more than this? Feed my... He, he, didn't, he didn't raise it up again. It is gone. It is gone. Listen, you have to be sincere with yourself. If you are to make heaven, except I want to lie to you. Let it go. There are some people that will offend you that they will not even see reasons. That they, have, they don't even know. They don't even believe they have offended you. What do you do to, to them? Break your head. I still stand by it. I'm right. And you are boiling. You see, pastor, that's what I said to you. <laughs> you're boiling you're just having high blood pressure for nothing it's true this person cannot see any reason you just need to begin to pray for them to, for God to help them they're not doing themselves any good don't get me wrong no 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 they're not doing themselves any good don't get me wrong don't let resentment take hold of your life don't let bitterness poison you don't let if you know and it all starts with you when you ask god for forgiveness he forgave you huh that's what the bible says for christ's sake you forgive others 
If that is at the back of your mind, because think about how many times you sin against God. The reason why I can't hold anybody down is because I know that, I mean, I sin against God at, at times. I mean, not, in short, many times, and I go back and say, Father God, forgive me. The problem with us is like we are like David, a lot of us here. We are like David, and it's a very, very painful thing. We are like David. After David took the wife of Uriah and killed Uriah, and the prophet came to him and said, there was a man that had just one sheep. And he was with the sheep, enjoying his sheep. And there was a man that had plenty flock ahead. And a visitor came. You know, because adultery, fornication, that passion, that desire for it is a visitor. It doesn't last for long. It's a visitor. He said, and a visitor came. And the man went to t- take the, the, the ship of the one that had just won. David Sinanga. He said, in this place, let that man be brought back. He will pay fourfold. And after what, you kill the person in short. They say, you are the person. He said, ah. We sack clothes. Ashes, he started praying, God, forgive me. Oh, if it was somebody else, it's good for the person to die. Now, because it is you. Because it is you. And they should forgive. Think about how many times you have sinned. If we hold, if God holds just to one thing that you have done, just let him just hold it. So you, you know how many times I say you should not do that thing? You did it seven times. You know, in short, you have done it 20 times. You say, I'm not forgiving you. You will, not be, you, you will be there. And you say, is there. I remember when I was growing up, when I was still very young, they were forcing me to be filled in the Holy Ghost. My first, you know, my dad was a pastor. <laughs> they would line up, they not lined us up. One guest minister came and it was, I mean, you know, as a young man. <laughs> and they lined us up to get filled in the Holy Ghost. My younger sister had gotten filled in the Holy Ghost. <sighs> me? <laughs> feeling the Holy Ghost. As they were all, when they got there, before the man even touched me, I, was, <laughs> I felt that so that this man will release me, let me go. You know. <laughs> Till I saw that they said, sin against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. <laughs> you know, I was I was condemned to hell. <laughs> ah, you know what? I mean, of course, I didn't understand scripture. Ah. I almost died. I prayed and prayed and prayed, all kind of prayer. Father God, if you forgive me of this, I will not do, I don't know, I mean, some of us that I've seen against the Holy Ghost. You know, I mean, that's it. But you want to be forgiven. But you cannot forgive others. You are burning the bridge that you will go on. That's why in the Lord's prayers, it says, forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive, think about how you forgive. Not with conditions. As we forgive, if God forgives you with condition, it's how you forgive is going to forgive you. You bring out what your partner told you a long time ago. She was good enough to tell you that, yes, I had a relationship uh, before we got married. Now there's an issue. That's how it is. See, all those men, uh, all those, you bring those things up. Now, the past. God, we, God, when God wants to forgive you, the same thing. When you say, God, forgive me. He says, all, all those things that you have done, he will bring it up against you as well. He says, forgive us. You want to be forgiven. If you want to forgive, you want to be forgiven without condition, then you need to forgive others without condition. Let it go. Humble yourself. Listen, is hellfire you're playing with? Then they don't talk about hellfire again in church. Yeah. It, it, Lake of fire, liquid fire. That's what you're playing with, oh. Be disguising it and say, Pastor, I, I don't, I forgive it, you know, with conditions. Anyway, you will see it in scripture. It's not Pastor Sam that is saying it. I'm just a microphone telling you what it is, you know. And these are the things that you need. You need to get to the place. Don't let bitterness. Forgiving is like a debt. When someone owes you a debt, let it go. That's what they say. You can't pay the debt. The, I mean, our debt to God. The Bible talks about, you know, the man that, that um, 
that was forgiven. I don't know where it is. I think it's in um, Matthew 18, if I'm right. It's in Matthew 18 from verse 23, if I'm right. Let's, let's just see that story and see if that's it. It's, okay, yes, that's it. It says, therefore, is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would have taken account of his servants. It says, and when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. And understand this, 10,000 talents of those days, huh, as much... When David was, um, was it, uh, um, Solomon was building, he used 8,000 ta- 8, talents of gold, you know. And so 10,000 t- talents, it's so much that in the man's lifetime, times five, he might not be able to pay it back. And, and that's how our sins to God. There was no way that would have been able to pay back. God gave it. He gave it to us. He, he released us. When he had begun to reckon, he was taken account. He was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. And for as, for, for as much as he had not paid, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. It says, then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. He says, but the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, not even up to a, day, a day's wage. In, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that, that. That's how a lot of us are when you don't forgive. You have reasons. And that's what the Bible says, forgive others, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You have death. I mean, the way you treat your wife, the way you treat your husband, think about it. He says, pay me that, that thou owest. And his fellow servants fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay all the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant. If you don't forgive, you're wicked. It's not me saying it. I mean, but that's the Bible. It says, it says, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. You desire that I should forgive you. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? It says, And his Lord was wrought and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly father read this, oh, we shall let's read together. Can we read this together, chapter 25? So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. From your heart, not from your mouth. From your heart, let it go. Is that devil you're giving an advantage to? See, the truth is, the person might have done these things. In short, he might have even been deliberate. Just imagine, the raptor, the raptor should just, the trumpet should just blow today. And now you're not be saying, hey, God, the reason I didn't go, it, 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 because of, think about it. You know, you need to hear this again and truly, and, you know, listen to it very well. Or else, I tell you, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Small people, huh? When you're small, you have a small mind. You hold on to people. When there's an issue, you hold on to people. You don't let them go. Great minds, they hold on to issues and the people are released. They can quarrel and have an argument over an issue and talk about it this minute. When it's over, they meet and say, uh-huh, let's go and watch that football. Issue is gone. Learn to separate issues from persons. We all have issues. You have issues. So when you have handled issues and the issues is giving you, forget issues. Let them relate with persons. Ask for wisdom to relate with persons. A lot of us don't know how to relate. When you hold on to people, hold on to offenses, you are small-minded. You're small-minded. You need to let these things go. It is very, it's, 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 it's very easy. It's, it's a costly thing, I tell you, you know, 
to forgive. The people can pay the debt back. That's just the truth. So let them go. You know, whatever, whether it's someone that did it to you or whatever. Now, quickly, why do we have to forgive? I will, we've looked at it and we're going to read the reason why we should forgive. One, for Christ's sake. Ephesians 4.32. Because of Christ. You have a reason to forgive because of Christ. You know, you have a reason to be offended, truly, because of what that person has done. But you have a bigger reason for Christ's sake. Even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. If you think about your sin, the fact that you would have spent your life in hell, but God has forgiven you, then learn to forgive. Let it go. For Christ's sake, Ephesians 4.32, for Christ's sake. For conscience sake, number two, your conscience. If you're a believer, your conscience will not release you. Huh? And it's a pointer, it's an indicator. It's just like in your car, you know, when the fear is low, you see, that light, it will, it will be there hmm? till the car cannot move again. Huh? And your conscience, you know, till you pass, you, know, you would know. Some of, some of us, you can use something to cover it oh, and not look at it oh, at the dashboard to see that it is red till the car stops, but it has warned you. Has warned you for conscience sake, not just for con your own conscience alone. Read about Bible talks about I don't have time to read all the scripture pure conscience, good conscience, you know, conscience towards orders. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 2, it says, But I've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not working in craftiness, nor oh, handling the word of God deceitfully. Don't handle the word of God deceitfully as a pastor. You don't know my husband, pastor. You don't know my wife. Don't handle it. They ask to what we need is peace, and let there be peace. You know, let's, let's come over these things. From today, let's not talk about the past. Let's move on. I'm sorry does not... I don't know. Are we in competition, especially in marriage? Oh, you say, I'm sorry to your wife or your husband. It doesn't make you anything less. It makes you, I mean, the, 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 the bigger person. The mature person. You see, the difference between natural and supernatural is the way you handle offenses. The, way, the difference between... Ordinary and extraordinary is the way you handle it. You see, the ordinary one is the normal one. Everybody is meant to be angry when they are offended. Everyone is meant to be bitter when they are offended. That's natural. That's ordinary. The extraordinary one is to, to release. It is a difficult one to do. To be angry and not to forgive is the easy one to do. To show that you're a bigger person, you forgive. You know, how, I mean, it's a difficult one to do. Bigger people do bigger things. That's what it is. It says, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So look at you. I say, uh, he's, if he goes to church now, he's the first person that will first go to church and be like, yeah, you say you're a Christian. And that's just the truth. You know, just imagine how many people that you offend. How many people, if because of you, one person, you know, of the, in the kingdom, one of these children, you know, miss heaven. Bible says it's better you put a millstone around your neck and drown yourself in the sea. It's better. It says, for conscience sake, we, you know, for communion's sake or for fellowship's sake. First John 1, 7. For communion's sake. For communion's sake, you need to like, you know, let go. You need to forgive. He says, but if you walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. In verse 8 and 9, let's just read it. It says, you know, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's how it is. As you confess to God, I mean, just let it go. Forgive, please forgive me. I'm wrong. And that's just it. And don't try to justify. You know, in doing that, you silence the voice of your flesh. Learn to silence. Learn to be humble. For, for, for communion. So that if you are angry with somebody or there's bitterness, when you get to church, just imagine how it is. Just imagine that you're not the one leading praise and worship. <laughs> Do you understand? When you lift up the hands and you see the person, oh, you change style. 
Do you understand? For conscience sake. For communion. For fellowship's sake. So that you can be free with your brother and your sister. You know? Now, that's not just state. You know? For your own sake. 2 Corinthians 2.10. Let's read it again. For your own sake. You forgive. Even God, for his own sake, he forgave. You know, we read it in Isaiah. He forgave. And he did not remember it again. He didn't, in other words, he didn't bring it up. He didn't recall it. It is gone. It is gone. He says, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive for your sake, forgive I it in the person of Christ. You know, why? You have to, for, for your own sake. Do even God forgive? Not only just for your own sake. So that you have peace. The reason why I say for your own sake, so that you have peace, you release yourself. That's what it is. And also, for the sake of the devil, the next verse, so that he will not take advantage. It says, lest Satan should get an advantage. Don't give him an advantage. Because he's looking for an advantage. Don't give him an advantage. And lastly, for heaven's sake. For heaven's sake. I beg of you. For heaven's sake. In short, if you do not forgive for any other sake, for heaven's sake, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses soul? For heaven's sake. You know, it's so important. You know, some people say, why, why are you preaching fear to people? Or preaching, you see, we, you, you will fear something, whether you like it or not. Mm. For diabetes' sake, some people don't take coke. <laughs> not like they don't like it. Is that also? We just know that. that for, there are some things we don't take for one sake. So there must be a sake. And why is it for Christ's sake? Let it go. I want you to bow down your head at this time if you're in this place. There are so many things I would have loved to talk about. The result of forgiveness and the rest of them. You know, when you forgive, it frees you. If it's not working, stop excusing it. Go and say, my husband, listen, this thing is not working. See, I'm not telling you that the person that you're talking to might understand. You make that effort to ensure love, love can help the situation. Love covers the multitude of faults. You know, there's no one that does not understand the language of love. The language of love, I mean, is not foreign to anybody. Everyone understands that language. If you show love and genuine love and repentance and intention, there has to be an intention that we want to make this work. Some of us, we've treated our partners very badly with words. You have pulled them down. You have, you have, you have run them down. You just, you, you, you talk to them anyhow. You talk to people anyhow. Words that you shouldn't use for others, that you don't want to be used for you. You use it on others. It's wickedness. The Bible says if you don't forgive, it is wickedness. Some people have been bearing grudges for, you know what happens to, I mean, thank God we have doctors in the house. When there's a wound and it festers for a long time, when a wound on the leg, on the hand, for a long time, it has festered, it's not healing, they will call you and say, we need to cut off this hand or this leg. Some of us, that bitterness has been in us. For You know, you are just only cutting short your life. And you're excusing it and giving it names. Talk, talk to God. And you know, you know, sincerely, brothers and sisters, the most painful of them all is on that day where you hear, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. And don't, don't get me wrong, there's some people that, you know, they don't see what they have done as wrong. They don't, I'm not saying you'll be friends with everybody again. Don't get that. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Get this right. You know, I'm not saying, you know, I mean, because you're forgiving. There's some people you go and forgive and tell you, what are you forgiving me for? What did I do wrong? I've not done anything wrong. Forgive yourself. Now, what you need to do is from the depth of your heart, release them. And say, Father, I've released this person. Yes, the person might not want to be your friend. There's nothing you can do about that. The person might not want to be around you anymore. There's nothing you can do about that. 
you know but you know when it is about relationship your husband your wife no there's nothing you can you can you must do something about it you must do something about it I want, you to, I want you to sincerely talk to God. You know. You are holding your father, your mother, your husband, your wife in prison. With bitterness. You have held them in prison for so long. You are, it has poisoned you. And because of that, you are poisoning others. The Bible says, it's only you will defy others. You will slander yeah, that person. Hmm. You see that person? See that person? That person is this. You will slander them. You talk ill about them to a lot of people. And when they see those, that person, they, they, they have no regards for them. You know, that one, uh, they said they did this. They, you know, you have slandered this person so much. Cry out in a place of mercy. In a place of mercy, Father, forgive me. And I'm going to forgive my brother. I'm going to forgive my sister without condition. Brothers and sisters, listen and listen hard to this. He said, if you don't forgive, your father in heaven will not forgive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. If you do not forgive, he will not forgive. Be sincere with yourself. You know you have not forgiven. Stop sugarcoating it. Stop painting it. You have not forgiven. You are bitter. Yes, the person has offended you. Try, I mean, let it go. Whatever it is, you are still holding on to and that's what you are still hammering on. Let it go. For peace sake, let it go. For Christ's sake, let it go. If you are in this place and you know, Bible says if you bring your offering onto the altar and you know that someone has ought against you, go and reconcile with it, your brother. We say if you go, paraventure you might gain a brother. There is gain when you reconcile. You might gain a brother, you might gain a sister, you might gain a friend. Mercy dear was great and grace was free. Pardon dear was more.